Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition. 12 box Hobby Edition. Pick your team at number 6 from jazbeescasebreaks.com. All cards ship. A lot of great stuff in here. Big thanks to everybody right here. Got into the action on a Thursday night. Remember, break 8 sold out um, before 6 and 7, just FYI. We're, 6 and 7 are about to happen pretty soon. If you see a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in a uh, filler. So congrats to the winners. Thanks to Dan with Last Bot Mojo, Phillies. 70% of the time, Last Bot Mojo hits 100% of the time. Here is the case. Bowen Chrome Hobby. Thanks, everybody, for getting in. Is there anyone here in in this break watching live? I feel like there have not been a lot of cheers or jeers in the chat to the previous break. I feel like the people actually in this break are not here. All right, so there's four boxes here, four boxes there, and the 12 boxes right over here. Good luck. Oh, Dan's here. All right, Dan. Welcome. Good luck. Now, Chad Da was asking me before I started this video what teams I think are going to end up with nine or so games left. Who makes the playoffs in both leagues? That's a pretty tough, tough question. Things are pretty tight. And let's go. Let's go to. Uh, Standings, MLB.com slash standings, wild card. Oh, yeah, this is, we're getting pretty close here. So the Red Sox look pretty comfortable with a wild card spot, with the main wild card spot. They'll be, as it stands now, they'd be playing for the, they'd be playing the Yankees, which would kind of be a cool wild card game. But right behind them are the, uh, are the Toronto Blue Jays, a game beyond a wild card spot, and the hot, Seattle Mariners, who won seven out of their last ten and five in a row, sweeping the A's to overtake them in the wild card spot. Now they're just two games back. What do you think is going to happen there, everybody? Now Chad's a, Chad Da is a Mariners fan, he uh, so I know what he wants. So Toronto, I think they're starting a series against the Twins. The Yankees are playing the Red Sox. All right. And the Mariners are playing the Hapless Angels. And Dano's looking for an Alec Baum. Big Boys 007. Yeah, this is kind of an old school crew, right? Joe P was here too. Yeah, Dano, Joe P, Rex. We went back in time a few years. All right. Good luck, everybody. Well, any, any thoughts on the AL wild card? I mean, the Mariners are happy. They're, they're playing a divisional rival who might want to play spoiler, but Angels are not very good. Ooh, this is very good. Pedro Leon, 29 out of 99. Green chrome autograph Astros. Burke Thomas got the Astros in the filler. Rated number one prospect in the international class. That's pretty strong. There's Nick York, Speckle, to 299. Now, all cards ship. Ladies and gentlemen, so this goes to the Red Sox. Burke Thomas got the Red Sox straight up. Um, just in the interest of time, I know I'm kind of sweeping through these a little quickly, but all cards will ship. If I happen to miss anything, don't worry. All cards will ship. I'll try to catch as much as possible. Out of 250, Purple Shimmer, Yoelki Cespedes, Ioannis' half-brother. That's for the White Sox, Joe Christian. And there's another Pedro Leon. Wow, Astros box right here for Burke Thomas. Number one international prospect. That's why the Astros are priced the way they are. So 
So Alec Thomas refractor to 499 for the Diamondbacks, Chris Maxwell. And box one in the books. And I'll do an autograph recap at the end of the break. Big boys, all those haven't had the Giants in this break. Big, Dave, your Giants, <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Stunned. Farhan Zaidi definitely did a, an excellent job with that squad. My cousins are Giants fans, and um, I got a couple cousins I'm pretty close to who are Giants fans. They're. Uh, they're enjoying it. No one has thoughts on the AL uh, wild card? I got to think. Okay, so Chad saying, Joe, the Blue Jays play the Yankees at the start of next week. So prime opportunity for the M's to make up some ground. Yeah, if the Mariners can take care of business against the Angels, Yankees and Red Sox playing this week, and they'll beat up on each other. And if Toronto stumbles against Minnesota, that, that's a perfect window for the, for the Mariners to put themselves in a good position. And then, when they play the Yankees the following week, that could be huge. Uh, who, like, what's going on? Who's doing it for the, for the Blue Jays? I guess Vlad Guerrero Jr. has been playing well. Getting some, I guess, getting some decent starting pitching. Or, I mean, for the M's, that's the Blue Jays. But who's doing it for the, for the Mariners, that is? It's just team effort? Yeah, Toronto's schedule looks pretty tough the rest of the way. There's Brandon Shoemake, Shimmer. Kyle Seeger's hitting bombs. There's Tucker Bradley for the Royals. That's for Joel, who won the Royals in that team random. Hobby six. Wow, Kyle almost hit for the cycle the other day. There's Jesus Sanchez to 50. Jesus Sanchez for the fish. That's going to be for Joe Parisi. Different Joe P. Mariners' bullpen's pretty good, right? I don't know about their starters, but I know their bullpen is pretty strong. Speaking of the Mariners, there's a refractor. Milcar Perez for Mark Bissett and the M's. Yeah, M's bullpen's incredible, saying Chad. That's what, I mean, that definitely helps. Big Boys 007 thinks it'll eventually be the Yankees. So I guess that Yankees Mariner series next week will be will be the really exciting one to keep an eye on. I'm sure that'll be on like MLB Network for out of market teams a lot. There's Miguel Belize for the Red Sox, Burke. There's Matt Chapman to 499. Speaking of the A's. Rex would root for the Giants just, just because he wants to see Chris Bryant win a ring before free agency. Or, and or Anthony Rizzo wants to see, see some former Cubbies win some rings. And Chad saying starters Chris Flexen, Logan Gilbert are great starters. Marco Gonzalez has kind of figured it out. I'm sure the Major League Baseball and the TV networks want to see Boston and, and, and the New York Yankees in a one-game wild card. But I wouldn't mind seeing, seeing Toronto or Seattle in there. 
Yeah. I thought Usai was going to be a bigger, bigger uh, international prospect for the Mariners, but the last just hasn't really done it the last couple seasons. Yeah, he had a rough start today, too, I think. So who do you start in a one-game playoff, Chad? Chad's a Mariners guy. In a one-game playoff, who's, who's on the bump? Mariners deserve it to make up for 2001, says Rex. Oh, uh, I mean, they'd have to win the whole the whole damn thing. There's Alexander Mojica, Magenta Shimmer or Pink Shimmer to 199. It's like Major League. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. <laughs> What's that? Win the whole effing thing. I bleeped it out. It's a family-friendly show, folks. There's Gregory Santos for the Giants. Big boys, 007 and his Giants. Number 21 Giants prospect. And there's Jordan Alvarez to 150. Blue Chrome for the Strohs, Burke. Chad says, Chad says uh, it feels weird to say, but he would put Chris Flexen out there on a one-game playoff. Have him start. He would say Logan Gilbert, but he but he's still yeah he's like a, he's a rookie he's a kid, it's a big pressure spot. I would start with a little more experience as well, and then lean on the, lean on clutch hitting. And that bullpen, ooh nice, this is the first dawn of glory auto I've seen. Sixty six out of ninety nine, Dan, uh, Daniel, Mon uh, Montano, that's an on card autograph that looks really sharp. Uh, that's Nick with the Rockies, Nick Nguyen. Pretty sweet. And that's 66 out of 99. So a lot of, lot of uh, very pleasant colors back there. There's Dylan Carlson to 250, purple chrome for the Cardinals, Mark R. Oh, man. No, the, the, I, I, David, you and I are on the same page about this. Not, not, not terribly thrilled with Joe Buck announcing baseball. Yeah, Yankees and Red Sox, Joe Buck will become unglued. Big Boys 007 saying. Well, yeah, you got season tickets for the Giants, so you'll get playoff games. There you go, David. Yeah, you don't have to watch on TV. You don't have to watch Joe Buck. I actually don't mind Joe Buck doing football. But I don't know, just baseball just doesn't do it for me. Golf, definitely not. Sometimes he'll do the Sunday golf. For the US Open, maybe? Something. Ma no, not Masters. But US Open? Yeah, I mean, do the Yankees have such, had such a weird year? Do they even, do they even deserve a playoff spot? They've had such a wacky year. Do Midwesterners still like Joe Buck though, Oliver? Or do they do they only like Joe Buck because he's Jack Buck's kid? I don't know, I've had this conversation before. I've had this conversation before and, and I've have had some St. Louis Cardinals fans say, well, Joe Buck's okay, but he gets a longer leash because of because of uh, who his dad is. Alright, next box. There's Logan Gilbert. We're just talking about him. Shimmer for Mark and the Mariners. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, Joe, if if it's like a Joe Buck John Smoltz combo in the booth, yeah, they don't, they don't like the Dodgers. There's Nick Fraso, Jorge Mir with the Bluebirds. You know. Dave, David, I'm actually, 
I'm actually more okay with A-Rod in the booth than I thought I'd be. I think he's actually okay. 11 out of 25, Clark Schmidt, speaking of the Yankees, Donald with the Bronx Bombers. My colleague Thomas here at the shop, big Yankees fan. And he's been agonizing over that team all year. There's Brendan Shoemake. For the Braves, that's for Vincent and the Bravos. Purple Chrome to 250 here in Hobby. Pick your team number six. And there's a Rainer Santana for Big Boys 007. David, with my rivals, the Giants. Number 27, Giants prospect. And there's a Luis Rodriguez, 136 out of 150. Color match, Mark Bissett with my Dodgers. One of their big prospects coming up the ranks. Deemed top Venezuelan prospect among the 2019 international class. This guy's supposed to be pretty good, too. I mean, they're all prospects. It's Bowman. We're, we're prospect hunting. Who knows what any of these players are going to be like, even the more hyped ones. But this is why we collect. Well, speaking of the Dodgers, um... What do you think is going to happen? The, the Padres helped out the Dodgers today. Dodgers won in extras. The Padres beat the Giants in extras. The Dodgers are only a game back of the, uh, of the Giants for the NL West. Can the Dodgers win the division? I hope so. Dodgers are playing. If I mean, Dodgers have to take care of business against the Diamondbacks. They've got them for the next three or four games. Giants are going to Colorado, and the, the Rockies actually played the Dodgers pretty tough, so maybe they're finishing the season strong. That would be helpful. And wacky, wild and wacky things can happen in Colorado. So if the Giants drop a, little, drop a couple, Dodgers win a couple, that could, this, that could be... That could be one of those things where it'll come down to the last game. I could see that happening pretty easily. Or it'll come down to the last game to see who wins the NL West. Now the Dodgers or the Giants would be pretty locked into that top wild card spot. Um, but who gets the second wild card spot? Man, the Cardinals have been just destroying lately. They've won 12 in a row. And they have got a four and a half game lead ahead of Philadelphia, five and a half game lead against Cincinnati, six games ahead of the Padres. I, those guys aren't getting close unless St. Louis just completely go, goes O for the rest of the season, O for their next nine or ten games. So I guess St. Louis is locked into that second wild card spot. It's kind of scary. Or are they peaking too soon? What does everyone think? There's a Gilberto Celestino. React to me. Anyone familiar with Lee Hacksaw Hamilton? Reactions, Lucadia, San Diego. This is Extra Sports 690. From Tijuana to the Canadian Rockies, I want to talk sports with you. Basave is the number 19 Rangers prospect. Oceanside, San Marcos, Lucadia, Del Mar, El Cajon, Rancho Santa Fe, dial in. I want to talk sports with you. Geraldo Perdomo to 499. Rancho Bernardo. This is Extra Sports 690, Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. There's Matthew Allen. I think some old school West Coasters will probably know, especially Southern California. Matthew Allen. For the Mets, that's going to go to Burke. Ooh, a redemption behind Alejandro Kirk. 
There's Nick York, refractor to 499, 005 out of 499. And all right. Behind Alejandro Kirk is a playing card, and behind this playing card is Bowman Chrome Prospect Blue Refractor. This should be to 150. And that is M, Milwaukee, Minnesota. M I N, Minnesota Twins, Maisael Urbina. I think he's supposed to be one of the bigger names in this as well. That's uh, I Capola. There you go, Grizzlebees, with the Twinkies. Gets the Urbina to 150 and a free top loader. Oliver, you remember Hacksaw, Lee Hacksaw Hamilton? Yeah, he's kind of an acquired taste. He's, he's a legend in San Diego. Extra Sport 690, ladies and gentlemen, was, was, uh, was one of the, I think on the West Coast, the first 24-hour all-sports station, radio station. So I think New York already had one, and they they kind of pioneered that in like the 80s, I think, with Mike Francesca and then Mad Dog, I think, were like the big names, right? And so, but there wasn't a West Coast version of that, believe it or not. Now, sports talk radio is everywhere. There's podcasts, sports talk radio, ESPN has affiliates in almost every market. So it's pretty, you can find a sports talk radio station, all sports talk radio stations everywhere. But Extra Sports 690, I think in the 90s maybe, had went on air, and they don't exist anymore, but they went on air as the as Cal Southern California's first all-sports talk radio station. Now, what was unique about them was that they're in, the stations in San Diego, the broadcasting tower was in Tijuana, which was not, I think, subject to FCC regulations. So it was like a 50,000 watt broadcasting tower that was in Tijuana. So, and with the way the AM frequencies work, at night, that, that extra sport 690, you could get pretty clearly in Los Angeles. I think even during the day too, pretty clearly in Los Angeles. And that signal could bounce all the way to like Northern California, Colorado, Idaho, all sorts of different markets, especially overnight. It got to be pretty popular. That's where Jim Rome got his start. Eduardo Garcia, 239 out of 250. Brewers. So going back to the NL really quick, Chad Dodd thinks the Dodgers beat the Astros in the World Series. Dodgers win the West. St. Louis rides their winning streak until they hit the Dodgers, losing five, and the Dodgers move on. I, I'm okay with that scenario. <laughs> There's Pedro Pineda. A's, that would be for Inku. And I'll do an autograph recap at the end of this break as well. Nolan Arenado to 299. St. Louis. Mark with the Cardinals. So as a Dodgers fan, Rex is asking, how worried am I about the Giants? Well, very worried. <laughs> There's still a game ahead in the NL West. I guess I'm more worried about the I'm more worried about the wild card spot because, ooh, nice Luis Rodriguez speckle autograph, 176 out of 299 for Mark Bissett and my Dodgers. Very nice. Five tool teen, exceptional ball tracker in center. Assist friendly arm strength, rhythmic, rhythmic hitter with balanced swing. It's pretty nice. Could be the future right here. Manuel Beltre to 125. Yeah, I'm not so worried about the Giants right now. I just hope they lose a few, few games that the Dodgers win, you know. 
But I'm more worried about if the Dodgers end up in that wild card spot, it can be wild. Anything can happen. I can't imagine Dodger winning over 100 games and then ending up getting knocked out of a one-game playoff because something crazy happened. If the Dodgers and Giants met up in a series, man, I think that would be excellent TV. Um, if that happened, I don't know. The Giants have been able to win a lot of close games. Something that I think the Dodgers have kind of struggled with, at least for a good chunk of the season. I think the Giants have won. If you look, I don't know, know the numbers off the top of my head, but I want to say the Giants have have a great record in like one or two run games or something like that in close games. They have got a great record, whereas the Dodgers, uh, I think, do not, or they're not as good as the Giants. So the Giants have been been able to be clutch at the end, win those extra inning games, you know, and win those close games late in the game. And they've got this clutchness, this this X factor, I think, that, that makes them really scary. Dodgers can go out there and, and blow out the Giants 8-0 on any given day, right? But they can also lose a lot of, like, 5-4 games, 2-3 games. Like, that could happen, too. Especially with the starting pitching that, that, the, that the Giants have. As a Dodger fan, how worried am I for the Astros cheating against us in the World Series again? It'd be pretty... I mean, at that point... I, I mean, I'd be... Ha I, I would actually... I actually might have to tip my hat and be like, that's pretty ballsy to do that again. <laughs> There's Justin Foscu. Dodgers were bad in close games early in the season, but they're pretty good now. Yeah, today was a good example. Foscu going to the Rangers. That'll be for uh, SKS here in hobby number six. There's Tanner Murray, Rays, Burke with Tampa Bay. Yeah, today's a good example. Man, if they won some of those close games early in the season, Oliver, we wouldn't be <laughs> we wouldn't be a game behind. There's Gabriel Rodriguez to 75. I think there was a I read this somewhere. There's a printing error. Or I guess just something weird in the color. Where this is out of 75. This should be a yellow, but it looks kind of orangey. The oranges are more of a of a vibrant orange. This is a sort of a lighter orange, but it's actually supposed to be yellow. It's seven out of seventy-five. Yeah, I mean, listen. If, <laughs> I think I'd be a lot more salty about it if the Dodgers didn't win the World Series last year. Out of 199, Helcris Olivares for the Rockies. And there's Jesus Para for EA and the Brew Crew. Fifteenth best prospect in the Brewer system. And Jesus Sanchez to 150, blue parallel. For Joe Parisi and the Marlins. All right, next box. Yeah, a lot of what ifs. So yeah, the, the, I mean, I'm surprised the Dodgers are going to win almost 100 games with all the injuries they have had. It makes me wonder, Oliver, if the Dodgers were 100% healthy the entire way, and if Cody Bellinger wasn't constantly injured and was actually having, let's say, even a mediocre season. How many games do you think the Dodgers would have won? And let's say, and that means if the Dodgers are 100% healthy and if Trevor Bauer doesn't run into those legal issues and he's still around. That means no Max Scherzer, no Trey Turner, but then everyone else is healthy. How many games do you think the Dodgers win? Would have won. I mean, are we talking like 115?
All right, next box. Good luck. And we got Gabriel Arias, green shimmer to 199 or to 99 that is for Cleveland and Jared Kelly purple to 250. White Sox, that's going to go go to Joe Christian and Gabriel Arias for Burke and Cleveland. And there's another Jesus Para for EA and the Brew Crew here in Hobby Pick Your Team number six. There you go, EA. A couple of those guys for you. Yeah, Oliver, you're thinking maybe Dodgers. Maybe win. Yeah, I think so too. Maybe they win another five or ten more games. Justin Foskey Refractor. Yeah, do we have Danny Duffy? Don't we have Cole Hamels under contract as well? He never quite worked out. There's Shane McClanahan to 250, Purple Chrome. And another Brewers autograph. Three in a row for EA, Eduarki Fernandez. There you go, Eric. Number 30, Brewers pro uh, Prospect. Oh, Dodgers ended up releasing Cole Hamels. Gotcha. That was a nice flyer, though. You have to try. And I think that's the... Uh, yeah, that's one per case. Bowman Ascensions. That's Andrew Vaughn. My colleague Sean Jaspi, pretty high on Andrew Vaughn. Joe Christian with the White Sox. Some of the, sometimes those can be autographed as well and, and numbered. All right, next box. I've got a question for you. So... So the Giants, I think everyone can agree, the Giants are a pretty surprised team this year, right? I forget what, I mean, in 2020, I know it was a short season, their winning percentage in 2020 was 483, right? Their winning percentage is uh, 647 now. In 2019, the Giants, that was a full season. The Giants, 475. So what I'm getting to is, who's the team that makes that kind of turnaround next year? Teams with similar-ish records this year, I guess would be Detroit, Kansas City, Angels, Mets, Marlins, Cubs, Rockies. They, they're in that sort of 440-ish, 470-ish winning percentage range right now. What team of that kind of range makes, maybe not as big of a turnaround as, as the Giants have made this season, but end up battling for a playoff spot next year? And we're talking sub-500 teams. You would expect that, that the... Teams like the Padres, just a, a hair over 500. You know, you got to you got to think they're going to be in the battle for a playoff spot anyway. But I'm talking sub 500 teams. Mets, that's a good call. Mets are have a 480 winning percentage. I think they had some. Uh, yeah, I mean Fr Francisco Lindor had a really really slow start to his season. Jacob Degrom injured. Noah Syndergaard injured, but but yeah, that team could be pretty pretty scary if they put it all together all at once. Chad Doss says Angels. Yeah, see the thing is, Angels. Yeah, they don't have the. I mean, if they address the pitching in the off season, yeah, I think I think maybe they can make some noise with that offense and with a healthy Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, all things are possible with those two guys, but. They're pitching from, from start to finish. 
starting pitching is terrible, and um, and the bullpen is terrible. There's Michael Goldberg for the A's in Koo. Third round pick here. And Josiah Gray, still Dodgers edition here to 499 refractor for Mark. No pitching, Chad saying, but a full year of Trout and Otani? I don't know if that would... I mean, the offense is pretty good, but they, they would have to... And I know they got like guys like Jared Walsh and... And whatnot, but and Joe Adele and, and you know a couple other youngsters, Brandon Marsh. There's Miggy. Purple to two fifty, but they would have to be on a historic sort of. It's kind of like the Twins, maybe a few years ago. There's Michael Goldberg again to four ninety nine refractor this time for Inku. They would have to be like setting offensive records if they're gonna overcome the overcome their pitching. There's Milcar Perez to 299. What happened? What uh, what happened with with Anthony Rendon? All right, three boxes to go. What happened with Anthony Rendon? I mean, he he was he had a great year before he signed. You know, and then was probably set to be just a doubles machine, but just kind of flopped a little bit. Is it the Angel organization? Is it? I, I I don't know what it is. Oh, he hurt his back, and he's hating that LA life. But he's not even in LA. <laughs> he's in he's in he's in Orange County. The Angels are not in Los Angeles. They're not even in Los Angeles County, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I guess that, that was a risk. I think that was the risk. They were just like, well, An Anthony Rendon is a great baseball player, but I don't know if he just like loves baseball as much as That's what we heard. Yeah, what comment did he make in that press conference, Oliver? You don't think the, you don't think the Mariners go after Corey Seager? I kind of agree with Oliver. I think the Mariners would love a chance to love a chance to put uh, to put the brothers together. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. He wasn't into this, that sort of L.A. life, and he ended up signing with the Angels instead. But So why? I don't know. You just feel like he just dropped off considerably. All right. Oh, Chad saying Kyle Seeger probably not getting re-signed. Ezekiel Tovar, Rockies. Nick Nguyen with that. I wonder if uh, I mean I wonder if they if if they do sign Corey Seager, there's Kyle Lewis right here. Speaking of the M's, maybe Kyle comes back for a shorter slash cheaper deal. There's JJ Blade. It's a high draft pick right here. Purple shimmer. For Joe Parisi and the Marlins. Yep, fourth overall pick. Ah, so Toro takes over third next year. Stick with J.P. Crawford. All right. Oh, nice. Pedro Leon, orange shimmer. Six out of 25. Astros. That's going to be for Burke Thomas, who got randomized the Strohs here in hobby case number six. 
Nice little color match too. It's pretty strong. There's Otani to two ninety nine. All right, two boxes to go. Well, Chad, how about this? You guys can still get Corey Seager. You can put him at DH. I think if Corey Seager says, I want to sign in Seattle, you're definitely making that happen. You'll find you'll find a place to put Corey Seager. <laughs> you'll find a place to put Corey Seager. And then you leverage that and try to get try to get Kyle Seager back for a short cheap deal. Hey, come play with your brother. Carlos Correa, I think, is a free agent, too. I think the Yankees will be looking at Carlos Correa or Corey Seager as well. So free agency is going to be pretty interesting. Dave was mentioning earlier that, that Giants fans, him, him and other Giants fans, are hoping that Chris Bryant can be re-signed to the Giants. That's, that's turning out to be a good fit. He kind of fits that Giants uniform, too. He doesn't look weird in a Giants uniform. Tyler Soderstrom, 35 out of 50, gold. Juan Fenn. Cubs will probably surprise everyone and get Seager and then bomb like Jock. No, I, 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 think, I think Kyle Seager definitely has a higher upside than Jock Peterson. Number 16 prospect for the M's. That'll be for Mark. There's six oh Sanchez two ninety nine. I just I mean I don't know. I, I the Cubs have so many prospects coming up the pipeline, it just doesn't seem doesn't seem like they would be really big on the free agent market or outbid guys like the Yankees for the services of Corey Seager or even a Carlos Correa. It just doesn't doesn't make sense. I guess if they do that then I guess that front office seems a little more confused than I thought. There's Dalton Jeffries, 69 out of 499. Rookie autograph for Inku and the A's. Number three, A's prospect. Nice. Austin Wells for the Yankees, a 250. Final box, final two autographs, and parallels. Maybe a Super Fractor? We'll see. Or some other kind of one of one? I haven't seen an out of five yet. I think there's out of fives in Hobby. Good luck, everybody. All right, yeah, Mariners have money. Keep in mind, Mariners payroll after this year is 40 million-ish. They're going hard in the offseason, so maybe they do go after Corey Seager. See, <laughs> yeah, the Angels would do something like like sign Corey Seager to like a ten year, three hundred million dollar deal or something like that when they should be getting pitching instead. Like they should be going after Max Scherzer in the off season. <laughs> but no, they'll end up paying Corey Seager.
Well, with the with with the way the with the way the um, the Mariners have played this year, they better spend money on the off season. Just you know, the, you, you would have to. Yeah, I remember, I remember you telling me that, Rex. Yeah, like Rex said, saying Hoyer, the Cubs GM, said long a, a while ago, not too long ago, that is, that they want to compete, or they don't want to wait for the farm system to compete. He wants to compete in 2022, so they might go after Trey Turner, Castellanos. Well, Trey Turner's not a free agent. There's Viandel Pena. You know what? That's exactly what I would say if I was a GM, knowing that I'm going to wait for my farm system. <laughs> That's what I would tell fans. There's Viandel Pena, number 20 prospect. It's exactly what I would say as a GM who knows they're going to be rebuilding. <laughs> There's Casey Mize to 499. Oh, yeah, we're going to go after all these guys. And then come January, February, yeah, just the market just didn't work out for us. <laughs> oh, redemption. Maximo Costa. To 150 for the Rangers, SKS. And let's see what this last one's going to be. Bowman Chrome Prospect Autograph Gold Refractor. Should be to 50. Minnesota again? Yep. Misael Urbina for the Twins. For I Capola. Nice. One of the bigger prospect names for the twins in there. All right. Quick recap. That was that's the end. That was a 2021 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition. Pick your team number six. Thanks everybody for getting in. Appreciate it. That was the case hit there. The one per case. Nice Luis Rodriguez speckle. I got to snap a picture of that. We got a blue refractor and a gold refractor, Grizzlebees. That's pretty nice. Clark Schmidt Orange. I like the, the Dawn of Glory, Danielle Montano. Insert autograph. And we had a really nice, there's Pedro Leon, Pedro Leon Green, Pedro Leon Orange Shimmer. Very nice for Burke and the Astros. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for hanging with me. I'll see you next time for the next Bowman Chrome break. Bye-bye.